many successes in the den are based on innovative ideas that do their bit to save the planet. And our next entrepreneur believes his eco idea, coupled with a sprinkling of patriotic passion, puts him in the perfect place to seal a deal. I probably get my drive from being Scottish. I think that's part of it. The, uh, we've always been downtrodden as a nation, and I think we've always had to fight. I come from Dundee. I'm very proud of our Scottish heritage. Brian's hoping his pitch will have what it takes to ignite the dragon's passion to invest in his product. It's really down to me in actually being able to sell the opportunity. The product sells itself. If I can sell the opportunity, then I think we'll have success today. Hi, my name is Brian Irvin. I'm CEO of Dynamic Materials Group. We're a specialist group of companies that manufacture advanced materials. Th these materials are used in a wide range of industries in very demanding environments. I'm here today representing Microtex Products Limited and a truly unique product called FireMizer. I'd like an £80,000 investment for a 16% equity stake in that business. FireMizer was born in Scotland. Um, it came around as a, as a chat between myself and my father and I was explaining a metallic process we have where we effectively spin molten metal and quench it rapidly. We quench it at about a million degrees per second and it gives the material some very special properties. My dad asked what would happen if we used those materials on the grate of his coal fire and I said I didn't know but don't tell my mum. He tried the material over a period of about two years and kept a log of, of the coal he was using. He actually used a third less coal. This meant we had a very novel product um, very unique in, in today's environment. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay, take your time. The product is very simple to use. You simply lay it on the grate of your coal fire or your wood burning stove and, and you will use a third less fuel. The product itself is, is beautifully simple. It leaves a very, very fine ash, so you've got less, uh, less ash to dispose of. So I'd like to give you some samples if I may. Great. A somewhat nervous pitch from entrepreneur Brian Irvin. Please be careful when you open it because it's very sharp. Who claims his energy saving mat can help real fire owners get more bang for their buck by using less fuel. Brian's asking for £80,000 in return for a 16% stake in his business. Will the product's eco friendly claims spark Deborah Meaden's interest? Brian, mm -hmm. hi. Hi. Can I just understand the mm -hmm. usage of it? Is it for wood burning stoves it or is. is it for open fires no, no, that don't have damp it, it is both, Deborah. What this does is because it's a superconductor, it actually gives you a very even burn. You don't get the hot spots. Um, it also ensures that you get every ounce of calorific value out of the fuel. So when you look at the ash there, it's like talcum powder as opposed to the, the normal ash you'd get in your ash pan, which we actually have bits in there. And it's effectively waste. That's, that's unburned fuel. It looks like wire wool. So I guess it's just conducting heat evenly because it's got a, a mesh. Yes. It glows red all the way across and it, and it balances out the airflow, so it's totally environmentally friendly. OK. Brian, you mentioned about some other businesses. How Can many companies have you got in total? There are nine companies in the group in total. Nine all, companies? Nine companies in the group, yeah, all specialising in advanced materials. So the other nine companies, what is it turnover? The turnover of the nine companies, including the US, is £6 million. £6 million? Yes. And that company makes a profit? Yeah. How about, much? About £1 million per annum. £1 million? Yeah. Mm. Would you ever consider an investment in your whole group? I've worked in the past a number of times with venture capitalists. There's a certain freedom about what we do now, um, because this is one of a number of products we have. There's probably half a dozen more. Would I get a fair value for them just now? No, I wouldn't. Well, to mm. compare me, venture capitalist, mm. it's like comparing Danger Mouse with Superman. Okay. And by the way, I'm not Danger Mouse. <laughs> OK. So I don't really get the comparison. No. It's just not right for me. At this point in time, I, I would have to say I, I, I wouldn't in, in the rest of the, of the group. Frustration for Peter Jones as Brian refuses to add his other businesses to the investment despite the opportunity to work with a superhero. Now, Tuka Suleiman 
wants to see if the finances of the company on offer stack up. So, how much turnover is that to? The turnover thought it's about sixty thousand pounds. Sixty thousand. So we're going from a six million business, or we have a business for sixty thousand pounds, and and you want approaching half a million for that, right? The valuation for that business is about half a million, in my view. In your view? Yeah. But Based on the investment I've made so far of about £420,000, and the meter's still running, so if you add 80000 oh, to that... Oh, you've made what on this? We've, we've spent about £420,000. The reason I'm here is we've tried agents, we've tried knocking on doors, and, and we haven't had any success thus far. So the £60,000 you've done, is that year-to-date, or that's the whole year? That, that's year? for the two and a half seasons that we've had. Tell me year one, year two, year three sales. 30,000, 17,000, and about 9,000, something of that order. It gets worse every year. Well, that's not very encouraging. Right, so I think it's quite an interesting product. Clever. Thank you. And um, very simple. So why has it costed you almost half a million pounds to to get this to market. This is the third iteration of packaging we've gone through because people would look at the packaging and say, oh, we don't like that, we want it to be green. Then someone else came along and said, oh, if you want it to stand out, it needs to be orange and it needs to have this on it. So we have been through, every time you go through a design iteration of packaging, currently we're spending 40 to 50,000 pounds a year with a PR agency alone. Well, the only person who's made money through this, it seems, is the marketing and PR agency. Correct, and the packaging companies. If I put my money in this business, you're literally going to burn cash. The entrepreneur's frank disclosure has surprised Tej Lalvani, who's concerned the investment is a potential money pit. Will Brian's frivolous financial skills worry Peter Jones? I really like it, and I like the concept. I think um, I actually think the packaging is okay. But here there needs to be a picture of a fire or a grate. They actually mm. know what it is, and it's a fire mat. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Say what it does on the tin. So there's a lot that I think can be done here. Mm -hmm. You're asking for 80,000. Mm -hmm. You don't need the money. Mm. What was the reason for you not going for a much, much lower amount of money? Yeah, I was, I, that would have been a smart move strategically. I, I accept that now. because to be part of a one product subsidiary investment of a nine group company of which I have no ownership or part of and to put up such a sizable amount of money, it's not something that I would do. Okay. Much as I can see an opportunity, it's not the opportunity that I'm gonna take forward so for that reason, I'm out. Brian's failure to offer up a slice of his other companies or ask for less cash has lost him his first dragon. Will Jenny Campbell see potential in the business that's up for grabs? Brian, hmm. hi. You're a very successful businessman, clearly. And I feel that somewhere along the way, You've lost sight of the fact that this is not working, is it? Mm. And time to call it a day? Because yes, or, or change the business model effectively. Yeah, stop, to purely re -evaluate. online. Uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. paying a PR company 40 or 50,000 pounds a year for mm. it to go nowhere, that's got to be really poor decision making, hasn't it? It doesn't make sense. And I sense almost a sense of desperation to, you know, rescue this, help me fix it, because otherwise I've got egg all over my face. I think there's probably, you know, an emotional attachment to this particular product because yeah. it was my dad that came up with the idea. Doesn't Wise Father say, Brian, I had this great idea, it didn't work, but stop. Focus on nine companies over there. He normally just says, don't give me another one of these, I've still got five of them in the shed because I've not used that one yet. It's fairly <laughs> oh, frugal. Oh, my goodness. It's fairly so... frugal. <laughs> Brian, look, um, this is what I'm thinking. Oh. OK. Nine companies, mm -hmm. right, generating £6 million pounds of sales, so your mm -hmm. time and focus is on them. Who's going to run this company? I, I won't actually be running it. I'll be involved in it, but I won't be running so it today. So why is the person who's going to be running it here today? You expect me to put in money 
80,000 pounds of my money into a company which is going to be run by someone else. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to invest. I'm out, but good luck. Um, Brian, I quite like this product, and I could have liked working with you, but you're not offering yourself. You're divided. So, you know, I'm not going to invest in what I could rudely call probably a, a hairy mat for a fireplace. That's, that's what it is. And one-tenth of your time, at best, I'm just not going to do that. OK. So, I'm out. Brian's revelation that he won't be at the helm of the business makes it too hot to handle for Tej Lalvani and Jenny Campbell. And it looks like Tuka Suleiman has also made up his mind. Brian, you're a very successful entrepreneur. You have nine companies and one dud. So what you're trying to do is pass the parcel. You've tried everything you can, consultants, PR, branding, packaging, marketing, and I can't see how I can add value to you. You've tried it, yeah? yeah? So on that basis, I'm not going to invest today and I'm out. Four dragons down as Brian's business fails to stoke the interest of Tuka Suleiman. Can the den's most eco-conscious investor, Deborah Meaden, offer the entrepreneur an 11th hour lifeline? Brian, a uh, manufacturing process, if this mm -hmm. is an environmentally friendly product, mm -hmm. how environmentally friendly is the manufacturing process? We have this unique process, this uh, metallic candy floss machine that spins the molten metal. Um, metallic candy floss, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and and it, it gives them, this is what gives the metal its special properties. So is this energy saving or is it switching energy from me using energy up in my house to you using energy in the factory? Have you done that some, though? Uh, the truth is I haven't, no. I am worried that you haven't done that calculation, because if you are claiming environmental benefit, there's mm -hmm. got to be a credibility underlying that, which actually says, no, this is genuinely environmentally friendly. I am disappointed. I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank time. you, Brian. OK, thank you. Brian's burning ambition for an investor has turned to ashes. He leaves the den with nothing but regrets. I would definitely make the deal more attractive if I went back, asking for a very small amount of money in order to benefit from the Dragon's um, experience and knowledge and contacts. He's on the last roll of the dice. Yeah, yeah. I think his idea of investing in a subsidiary went up in flames. <laughs>